I reached out to a mental health professional who has requested to remain anonymous, because I wanted to cover all of my bases with these takes and not just rely on existing articles. Instead, I wanted a qualified professional's take on this very specific instance, and I am incredibly grateful to them for providing it. This individual has almost 30 years of experience as a therapist, a master's degree in psychology, and is a certified social worker. They have worked with both offenders and victims, and they have studied both extensively. They were given the same description of Lollicon and the nuances of it that was given at the beginning of this video, and they were given no information as to my own personal stance to preserve objectivity and an unbiased perspective. Our interview is as follows, with distortion for anonymity's sake. Is there any reason that an individual would enjoy media depicting an underage fictional character in a sexual situation that does not reflect pedophilic inclinations? From an ethical and moral position, as well as from a child development, psychological, and law enforcement perspective, I would suggest that it would be deemed pedophilic to be viewing sexualized art of underage children, perhaps even to be creating it if it is posted somewhere for all to see. It is a very slippery slope and a very concerning one. As a therapist who has been working with children and youth for over 28 years, I have been witness to the damage that's been done to children who have been exposed to sexualized art, as well as those who have been sexually abused. It would perpetrate an already existing epidemic. Those keen to view fictional art eroticizing children is a big red flag. Would you consider an individual who enjoys art of fictional underage characters depicted sexually to be a pedophile? Pedophile is a strong term with a clear definition, a person sexually attracted to children. My query is, what is the individual gleaning from sexualized art of children specifically? I am hard pressed to understand. If they are not sexually attracted to children, why would they not instead enjoy something similar of adults? Why children? Why is it specifically about children expressed sexually in art that is appealing? I think the answer is right there. I would posit that it is the children specifically that draws them into the enjoyment. Thus, it begs one to question, are they then a pedophile? Do you believe that the creation and circulation of this art does measurable harm to actual children, even if the characters depicted are fictional and not real children themselves? I do. It perpetuates the eroticization of children, and also has a strong possibility of causing more trauma and damage to children who have been sexually abused or assaulted, in addition to the possibility of putting other children at risk. It would give children the message that they are not valued, not safe, and are objects to be used sexually rather than little humans who have the basic and essential right to be safe and secure in this world, and to maintain their innocence. So yes, immeasurable harm. It also has the potential to reach traumatized adults who have been sexually abused as children and had to overcome those assaults against them. If the person creating sexualized art of fictional children is a victim of CSA themselves, do you believe that them enjoying and creating this media is a valid coping mechanism? Art for therapy purposes can have significant value for healing. It's circulating that art that is the concern. For those healing from childhood sexual abuse through art, the tendency of the individual is not to have that made public and shown to the world. It is typically a very private process for them to work out and is loaded with emotions, thoughts, and struggles that are too broad to mention here. It is a private process if used in this way, and those that have experienced childhood abuse would understand how making this public and accessible to anyone would be damaging not only to them, but to all children and adults with that history in multiple catastrophic ways. Or I would hope that they would understand. If that is not the case, I would suggest that their healing and understanding of what happened to them is not fully integrated. If the person creating sexualized art of fictional characters is not a victim of CSA themselves, do you believe that there is any justifiable reason for them to enjoy and create this media? I struggle to find a way to justify this art otherwise. I would be concerned and would wonder what is motivating that individual. I'm looking at this as a therapist and not through the lens of an artist. It again becomes a very significant moral, ethical, and legal issue in my mind. The question keeps coming up, why children? Do you believe that the sexualization of fictional children in art could lead to the normalization and acceptance of actual children in reality? Yes. It absolutely perpetrates an already tragic existing problem, gives others permission to do so, normalizes it, and completely devalues the innocence and safety of children, putting them at increased risk. It can also be very re-traumatizing for children who have been victimized. The risk is tremendous for normalization and acceptance of this horrific assault on children. Do you believe that this type of art should be allowed to exist on the internet? 
100% no, it should not. The internet is now where predators lurk the most and is used to groom children. Furthermore, children are learning younger and younger how to access the internet and are very savvy at finding all sorts of things. The potential damage to them coming across this type of media is tremendous. We all have a responsibility in our society, regardless of our passions, freedom of speech and expression, etc., to keep our children safe. Many justify the enjoyment of this content as paraphilia. Do you agree with this? One of the key elements in the term paraphilia is that it pertains to mature, consenting partners. Children are not mature, and they are not consenting. Additionally, they are considered to be too young to consent if given the option. Paraphilia is also considered an intense and persistent sexual interest. Intense and persistent sexual interest clearly shows it is not just for the enjoyment of art, it is the sexual pleasure they receive from art of sexualized children. I think that says it all. Thank you again to this individual for their educated insight, as I feel that this video would not have been thorough or complete without the input of a professional on this specific circumstance. I sincerely hope that this video was able to provide an adequate, thorough, and detailed follow-up to my initial video, as I do recognize that I did gloss over the topic of Lalkan despite having the resources not to. I will not make that mistake again in the future. I understand that many potential viewers may disagree, but I truly believe that I have done the utmost research into this topic, and I don't believe that there is anything any of them can present at this point that would change my view at Polycon. I also believe that anyone who supports the sexualization of children in media of any kind, specifically because those characters are children and not despite the fact that they're children, I, I don't believe they're someone I want to have a conversation with. I'm not saying that people sexualizing underage characters despite the fact that their children are fine, but they're not who I'm referring to in this video, although I may revisit that specific subgroup in the future. Thank you for watching, and I hope the video was adequately informative.